What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon VGC video. Today I want to talk about Hisuian Quillfish and Overquill, two new Pokemon that we're getting in Pokemon Legends Arceus and which will eventually be available in a game where competitive battling actually exists, whether it be a Sword and Shield update or Generation 9. We know at some point we will be able to use these Pokemon with the abilities and moves that have been data mined. So yeah, uh, I just want to point that out because a lot of people will comment there's no competitive in Pokemon Legends Arceus. We know we're just speculating for the future in this video. But Hisuian Quillfish and Overquill, I think, have to be among the best new Pokemon that we are getting in these games. Why is it? Well, previously, we've had other Dark and Poison types. If we actually take a look at it, uh, there's only a few, actually. I believe it's just Skuntank and Drapion and, of course, um, Alolan Muck. Now, Alolan Muck was a phenomenal Pokemon in VGC, mainly due to the fact that it had... Uh, gluttony and like we had figgy berry back in the day so basically it would run like a very bulky knockoff poison jab um protect and like final move i think it was usually ice punch to deal with garchomp uh but yeah it was it was like just a super bulky pokemon that you would see in vgc and it was really reliable it also had power of alchemy stuff but mainly what benefited it was its really solid typing of poison and dark along with the great bulk you, you can see that this thing is like very hard to knock out especially when it's only weak to ground moves like exclusively so that's great hisui and quillfish and overquill have the exact same typing uh but hisui and quillfish and overquill also have access to intimidate which are you know like the combination of intimidate and uh the typing is just so so good for them particularly quillfish which i think is going to be much better than overquill and vgc but we'll get into that in a second um, as always, if you enjoy this video, leave a like. I know I'm kind of late to saying that you just said at the beginning, but if you enjoy this video, leave a like and then subscribe to the channel, turn notifications, and comment down below what you think about these Pokemon. But let's start off with Overquill and then I'll get into Quillfish because I think Quillfish is going to be much better. Overquill has a really interesting stat spread. 85 HP and 95 defense along with Intimidate make it about as bulky as Incineroar if we actually take a look at the stats. 95 HP, 90 defense. 85 HP, 95 defense, so it's it's similar in bulk along with the Intimidate. It has a better defensive typing overall, um, but it's probably going to be more offensive. Actually, the more I look at it, the more Incineroar like it is. It hits about as hard as Incineroar does. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, this thing has some pretty decent moves at its disposal if we assume that it gets the same moves that regular Quillfish does, uh, which, you know, I, we can obviously assume that it's going to get Poison Jab and stuff, but it also has the exclusive move Bar Barrage, which basically is like a physical hex from what I understand it has a chance to poison each time you use it but the power will double if it gets hit but I think poison jab is going to be more standard than that uh poison jab throat chop is probably going to be the combo of moves that you would run on this thing since regular quillfish gets throat chop uh those are the two stab moves you get sword stance life orb is what I assume you would run on a swift swim set and swift swim is a very straightforward thing you know basically you just sword stance up under rain you hit things um I don't know how I feel about a non-water type swift swimmer historically they haven't been that good if we actually take a look at swift swim pokemon that aren't water type the, the main thing is they can't take advantage of their stab moves uh getting boosted by rain uh, i think it's mainly just like armaldo bear tick and like that's it yeah like they historically have not been great um maybe there's one more that i'm missing no i think that's it it's like it, it, it you mainly want to uh, like the thing about swift swim pokemon is that they mainly want to be able to use water type moves in the rain to get that advantage on them having double speed in the rain is like when you're not water type is pretty much just if you counter water types that's going to be useful but overquill really doesn't um especially since most swift swimmers are special attackers it doesn't even switch in on them so i think that if you want to run swift swim go ahead and do it it's probably going to be okay next to Kyogre or if you want to run it on like a, a rain team with like Politoed Kingdra I suppose it would help check the grass types that beat them so Overquill would be really good on a rain team if you wanted to you know have it hard switch in on Rillaboom which it would hard wall uh, but I would honestly recommend just running Intimidate at that point like it's going to be good on rain don't get me wrong but it's going to be good as an Intimidate user that's a poison type that beats Rillaboom and that's like it uh, I think a much more viable set than straight up offensive is probably going to be Assault Vest. Like we said, it already has really good physical bulk. Uh, and if you put an Assault Vest on there, it helps compensate for the special bulk. Uh, basically, you're just going to run like Poison Jab, Throat Chop. I think Liquidation is a fine move. Uh, there aren't very many other moves you would want to run on an Assault Vest set. I suppose you could run Steel Roller if you're really feeling saucy that day. Uh, but yeah, I think 
your final move is pretty much always going to be uh, Icy Wind though, because Icy Wind is really solid for that speed control versus quite a few things. And with 107 speed being achievable with just 12 speed investment, after two Icy Winds, you're outspeeding pretty much everything in the game. So that's really nice. Uh, yeah, I mean, the special book definitely lets it down quite a bit, so putting an Assault Vest on there is more of a patch than anything. Now let's talk about the Pokemon that I actually care about, because there's no chance I'm using Overcool and Competitive. Quillfish is where it's at, baby. Now, here's the thing about Quillfish. We can assume it gets most of the moves that regular Quillfish does, and that moveset includes quite a bit of uh, really important things. So, Quillfish and Hisuian Quillfish have the exact same speed stat, 85 which means Quillfish can also achieve 107 pretty easily. Not that it matters too much, it's just really nice for Tailwind stuff, so, you know, might as well hit 107 if you can. If you max out this thing's HP and give it, like, 236 defense, because you definitely want that speed, and that's where the defense ends up falling, and four special defense, and you slap an Eviolite on this thing, this thing can, this thing becomes, like, roughly as bulky as Hisuian, or as a Overquill would with an Assault Vest, but with the Intimidate and the boost to its physical defense, it becomes crazy crazy good especially since regular quillfish gets pain split we can assume that this thing gets pain split which means it's just insane longevity and utility and it's a low hp pain split as well 65 base hp pain split will be chunking things for so much if you manage to get low enough so here's the deal you're facing off against a lander's t it's jolly intimidate it goes for an earthquake versus uh hisuian quillfish which is poison type with this spread if the uh, if the Landorus is at minus one due to the Intimidate, you're going to be taking under 50% most of the time. It's an 8.6% chance to two hit KO. Now, let's say that you end up taking the maximum roll. You take, you know, 52% from this thing. Now you get to go for the Pain Split on the Landorus Therian and chunk it for well over half of its health. That's, that, that's, that's crazy because if you don't know how it works, Pain Split takes the actual HP stat. So 172 and let's just go with like a Landorus, right? Let's go with the Landers Therian at level 50. 164. Now that 172, let's bring it down to like 50%. So well, let me let me bring up the calculator. I, I'm sorry, I don't want to I don't want to do math in my head right now. I, I I'm already doing a lot of math today with my classes. So 172 divided by two, you're at 86 HP. Now average that with a full health Landers, which is going to be let's say 4 HP. 165 plus 165 divided by two, and each of them get that back. 125 HP. All of a sudden, you're pretty much, you know, what, what were we at? You're like at pretty high health, and the Landorus is like chunked for quite a bit. Like, like in the lower you go, the better that gets. So if you manage to get chunked down to like one HP, all of a sudden the Landorus is gonna be going down to like nothing. Like that's, that's it just, it's increasing returns the lower your HP goes and you benefit more from the pain split than other Pokemon do. That's why we would see like really annoying pain split mons like Dusclops. Dusclops is a phenomenal pain split user because its HP is even lower. It doesn't take much for Dusclops to get back up to full. Like if you pain split a full health like Lunala, then you just go back up to full or whatever you would pain split. So yeah, that's really nice. Taunt at this speed tier is super good because let's let's bring up Dusclops again. Dusclops is a really solid Trick Room user, or even Porygon 2. Let's go Porygon 2, actually. Porygon 2 is a really solid Trick Room user. It wants to go for Trick Room. It wants to go for a Recover. Guess what? Taunt it. They can't do it anymore. Rillaboom. That's another thing we can calc for, actually. Rillaboom. Let's just go with, like, the Picolytic set. Just, you know, max HP, max attack. It's probably not the most accurate Rillaboom, since you want to run a little bit more bulk and speed on that. But this is, like, worst case scenario. A Woodhammer from a Rillaboom is doing under a quarter most of the time, 22%. And your poison jab is doing like 50% despite not really being invested into. That's like that. That's really, really good. Uh, I think another thing we could look into is like Tapu Fini calcs. Tapu Fini is always really common. It usually wants to set up calm mines and stuff and it usually isn't hitting 107 speed. It's usually hitting like 105 or whatever um, since they don't invest that much. But if you face off against like a standard Tapu Fini, a pretty physically defensive one, their Moonblast is going to be doing like 50% to you because you're not that specially bulky, but your poison jab is doing about the same and you can stop them from setting up with the taunt. This thing is going to have insane utility in VGC. Like, hold on, I want to look at the most common Pokemon in the format. Zacian Crown, I already did a calc for that. Zacian actually takes like, or you actually take like about 50% from Zacian. Incineroar, you hard wall, like Incineroar can't beat you. Kyogre, you're definitely going to get annihilated by. Uh, Regilecki, you probably get annihilated by that. Thunderous, you should be able to do good versus not defiant variants, but you know, you're fine. 
uh, Venusaur, like it's the special attackers that beat you, but like really common physical attackers, Rillaboom, Lander, Therian, um, even Groudon. Groudon would be an interesting calc to run here. Let me take a look at that one. So Quillfish, I already have this put in. I just have to change the secondary typing to dark. So if we go versus Groudon, Groudon is actually a really interesting one for restricted formats so we can see how good this thing gets. Precipice Blades, you're guaranteed to live that at minus one and that's from Life Orb Groudon, which isn't all that common. Non-Life Orb Groudon, you're like eating that like a champ. And like I said, you just pain split all that health back. Groudon's got 100 base HP, so you get so much more health out of that than they do, especially since they invest heavily into HP. Like you're gonna get a lot of health back from that. Um, other Pokemon that we can take a look at. I'm just gonna open up a new tab. There we go. I'm just trying to like take a look at really common Pokemon. This thing probably hard walls. Urshifu is actually a really interesting one since Urshifu ignores the stat drop because of the crits. Uh, you know, close combat. Oh my god. Yeah, because they're not gonna Wicked Blow you because Wicked Blow is is like the one that you know is Dark type, so it ignores the crit, but it does less than minus one close combat. Close combat is a 99% chance to three hit KO. That's pretty good. Getting three hit KO'd by, you know, Jolly Urshifu is really nice. Water Urshifu is probably another one that we should take a look at. Uh, Urshifu Rapid Strike. Surging Strikes. Was it 15%? Is that three Surging Strikes? Yeah, three hits. Surging Strikes does like 19%. That's that's bad. Oh, no. All right, no, that's, that's you know, individual hits. So, yeah, you're taking like 57%. So you still switch in on that. Close combat, you still switch in on that. Like this thing switches in on so many good physical attackers in the format. Um, I don't think there's too many more I can really go over here since we're playing restricted. Uh, it's probably very good versus ho -Oh, but ho -Oh isn't all that common. Mainly, I just think like it's going to be a really solid Pokemon as an Intimidator. Yes, it's in contention with Landorus. Yes, it's in contention with Incineroar for like the top spot of an Intimidator. But I think that it provides a different level of utility than Incineroar. Incineroar mainly is going to be like Fake Out, Parting Shot, Flare Blitz, and Snarl, right? Yeah, those are all good, right? If Quillfish gets Snarl, guess what? You drop the Taunt for Snarl. But it's like just a different typing. And if it... Oh my god, if this thing got Snarl, that'd actually be insane. I would love that. I doubt it does, but it is a Dark type, so there's a good chance it does. Uh, I just think that, you know, with the moves that we pretty much have confirmed, it's already great. If it gets Snarl, it just gets even better. Taunt is really nice at that speed tier. Everything about it is just super good. And being able to hard wall Rillaboom is going to be super awesome. So yeah, uh, those are my initial thoughts on Quillfish and Overquill. Obviously, I spent more time on Quillfish because I think it's much more interesting because of the Eviolite. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.